Hey, welcome back to another vlog. I'm going to do it every week. I've been doing it every week for like three or four months now, so I like doing this. I'm going to keep doing it. Um, last week I talked about the ice skating, and it went well. I don't have anything really like that I did this week or even next week um, that... that dating stuff is not going great but that made me kind of think of something to talk about today um related to that which was i think i've been depressed twice in my life i'm pretty confident of that and the first time was when i was living with my parents i was 25 and while i was in college i didn't feel too self-conscious about that like living with your parents and you don't have to feel bad about it whenever you're doing it but i i started to feel really bad when i was like 24 25 for that period i started to get depressed because i didn't know how to move out i didn't think it was possible because i wasn't making a lot of money new jersey super expensive I didn't, I, I was like, oh, I have to get a new job, but so then I have to do all this other stuff, and I don't think I'm capable of that, so I was pretty depressed f for about a year until I f found an apartment, <laughs> and I moved out, and the second time was well documented here when I was looking for a new job. The thoughts are always really similar, I guess this is just like textbook depression which is just you don't see a possibility of you living the life that you think you should be living so when i was looking for a job i remember constantly thinking like every job i go to is going to be involved like interacting with other people especially if i want to make enough money to live by myself so how is it it's going to be impossible i don't see a possible future for me so then that's when you get depressed and you start to think. I mean, I was never suicidal, but, um, like, I never made a plan to do it. But I was definitely, I mean, like, if you go back and watch some of those videos from last year, I was definitely thinking about, like, I kind of wish I was dead because I don't know how to solve. It's just like you have a problem and you don't know how to solve it. Um, and sometimes it can actually even be kind of, worse when you're going to therapy and therapy isn't even helping because then you're like well then therapy's not helping then well, nothing can help so all that is to say with these stupid i i've put off this whole dating thing i just don't like talking about it and i just it's like ugh, it's so it's so feminine i guess like to talk about relationships and <laughs> i don't want to be like oh girls and stuff I'm 28 years old. I'm like a... If there was a war, I'd be too old to be drafted into it. <laughs> That's how old I am. <laughs> like, football players are retiring at my age. I'm old. I, it's so stupid. I don't know. <laughs> but, so, the whole point is... I'm, I'm, I feel myself kind of going to the same thoughts of... girlfriend stuff because like i've been doing this for like four months and i, I i'm just like i'm always going to be me like how am is, how is it possible for me to be in a relationship how am i i can't even like hold a conversation with the male man how am i gonna connect with someone like on the deepest possible level it doesn't like it's not gonna happen it's impossible um so but this is a happy video for once. There's growth here because I'm not depressed right now. Um, part of that is because I think, well, therapy and the medicine and whatever, but um, <laughs> I do kind of look back on the two times. This seems kind of bad. Like I look back on the two times and I actually got what I wanted. I got an apartment, I got a new job. So I'm like, well, you probably get a girlfriend because you get whatever you want. <laughs> I'm like the luckiest person in the world, so it'll probably happen. <laughs> Which is not very 
charismatic to say, but it's like true. I mean, anytime I've ever wanted something, it just happens. It does feel like, well, uh, maybe once I get a girlfriend or whatever, like this is growth. Like you're not, you're, at least you're not depressed. The reason you're not depressed is because you think you're gonna get what you want, which doesn't seem healthy. It seems like it would be healthier to be like, well, even if you don't get what you want, still be happy with who you are, right? Um, but I'm not there yet, I guess. <laughs> Maybe for the next thing, the fourth thing, whatever that would be, what would that be? Oh God, don't even think about it. <laughs> That's stressful. But like, why, but for real though, like what's wrong with my Tinder profile? I got like all these profiles. I took a selfie for the first time in my life. I've always been um, afraid to take selfies because whenever you look at the front facing camera, like you accidentally hit the camera, you, I get like a reaction like, oh my God, who is that gremlin? <laughs> He's gonna start talking about his precious and <laughs> the hobbits. Is, <laughs> He's so gross. It's the first good selfie I've ever taken, but like, I didn't realize when you take a selfie, there's like a, an art to it, kind of. You have to have a good lighting and you have to, I was taking weird pictures. Do I have the bad ones? <laughs> yeah, I'll show you the bad ones too. Like, okay, so here's me practicing. See, this one's horrible. Can you see it? That one's no good. And then I'm thinking like, you've got to squint more. <laughs> your, see, your eyes are too open. You look weird. So squint. So this is me practicing. Okay, I'm getting better. Squinting. But but still kind of looks weird, right? What's this one? Is this one's a little bit better? See, he's he's he looks more. He looks more like a man. Like he could handle. If a guy came up to me, and and I was on a date, and he's like, "Give me your money." This this guy could handle it, right? <laughs> and this is, where's the one? Okay, so so this is a little bit more, and then this is the one I picked. I'm like, I was getting the squint down, and then I got the squint down. Then a little bit of a smile, like, but the smile is not great because it does make me look a little bit smug. Like this guy, this guy thinks he's super attractive. Look at this guy, look at, he thinks he's cooler than he actually is. <laughs> It's so hard to, to make a picture. I don't know. <laughs> so that was my process. I thought that was a fun little... I didn't realize, like, when you when I was smiling and I was practicing, I was like... <laughs> but you have to squint. You gotta be, like... In, like You gotta smolder. Smolder it up a little bit. Be more... Hmm, like, I'm thinking about something interesting. I was thinking back more about meaning again meaning of life purpose um, when I was writing these notes it made sense why these two points were connected but now I can't remember why <laughs> it does I, I guess this is why because I keep doing these things like oh you got the job and oh you got the apartment and oh I'm working towards a relationship it does feel like a heroic effort on my part to do these things um, because I don't have purpose and I don't have like all these other idiots walking around they got purpose and they don't have anxiety and they're like when they achieve something it's kind of well you're normal so of course you're gonna do normal people things but when I do something normal it does feel and I try to make it feel like it kind of it's kind of amazing that I'm I was able to do that. <laughs> and I know I do obviously have a lot of advantages going for me like I had good parents and I had I was white so I got like people just give when you're white people just give you jobs like <laughs> that first job I had it's cuz my parents knew them and they're just like hey you're white and you went to school you want a job and I was like oh, okay I didn't really even have to interview for that so like I know I have advantages, um, but I don't have an advantage for relationship stuff. I'm on level negative 100, and everybody starts out on zero. Um, so if I'm able to do it, it is kind of like a Herculean 
effort on my part <laughs> to overcome all these stupid things. And I guess the point of that is to say, like, if you do something, feel the same way. Sometimes I forget I'm talking, like, in a video. Because people have started watching a little bit. A little bit. A couple people watch. And so I have to kind of address, like, hey, uh, Vault, you, you did something good today, so feel good about it. <laughs> and I also kind of wanted to talk about the purpose thing. Um, I remember talking a lot about it last year because... When you are depressed, you need purpose to do anything. Because you're like, why am I doing any of this stupid crap? Like, I gotta get out of bed every day and go to this job that I hate, and it's all for nothing anyway. We're all gonna die and nothing we do matters, so what's the point of putting in any, any effort? Then when the depression goes away, the meaning still isn't there, but you don't care because you're like, well, I can still get out of bed, it's easy. My job's easy and I like it, and so it's fine. Um, I still hope, I still hold out some hope that, like, maybe one day I'll think of, uh, or I'll have a meaning or whatever. I still don't, and part of me really does believe that there is no meaning if I really think about it. <laughs> it's, it's all for nothing. George Washington died because his doctor's drained his blood because he had the flu, whatever. I've talked about it before, but <laughs> that's always come to my mind. Babies have cancer, whatever. Yeah, just a Christian. I'm a Christian, if you can't tell, <laughs> which you probably can't. Um, the Christian view of purpose and meaning never clicks with me. Um, part of it is like, oh, God has a plan for each person, and he's working through your life and if you pray and you believe in him, he'll lead you like the way, and he'll keep you on the straight and narrow. Um, I don't believe that because I don't want to believe that. I, I, honestly, I don't want to believe it because if God does have a plan, like his plan is stupid. I'm, I could think of a better plan than his plan. I'm part of me is like, yeah, okay. The the macro stuff is pretty cool, like. The fact that we have these senses like sight and hearing and they're both based on different things like sights based on electromagnetic radiation from a giant fusion reactor in the sky and it creates heat and and light that we can see things and sound is different like it's based off like little tiny particles in the air bouncing off each other and hitting your eardrum like this crazy thing in your ear that like that's all crazy and awesome like okay maybe i couldn't have been able to think of that but like the fact that okay this the fusion reactor is pretty cool but then it also gives people cancer so i don't know what i'm thinking God, i don't know god's god's grand plan like i've talked about that a million times but i haven't done a vlog about it what's the plan it's frustrating that he doesn't let you in on it you just have to trust him that somehow babies having cancer is part of a plan that is good. I don't know. It doesn't make sense to me. And then I just think like, well, I don't want God to be that cruel and stupid. If I was God, I could think of a better plan. And what is the plan? We've been here for 3,000 years. What are we, what are we doing? <laughs> What's the plan? 3,000 years. We've been here for, whatever, 100,000 years. I just mean, like, modern civilization. Yeah, so, I don't know. Maybe my entire life I'll just believe that there's no meaning. And everything you do will get erased by time, of course. I don't mean to get too ecclesiastical on you, but nothing you do matters. <laughs> in a 1,000 years, in a 100 years, everything you do can be probably reduced to, like, a couple things so yeah I'm a Christian who doesn't believe in a purpose which is kind of a weird contradiction in terms like it's not a thing that most Christian I don't know I've never heard of a Christian who's like oh God doesn't have a plan and I don't I don't I can't believe that I don't want to <laughs>
why do people want to believe like oh god has a plan don't they see how stupid his plan is i don't know sorry if you're a christian and you're watching this but i'm a christian <laughs> i guess if you're a christian you would tell me like well you don't really know god or understand god because part of me like i connect more with humanity than this higher being because i'm thinking here's a thought i've i've had like if humanity if we're somehow like these little ants on this little rock we're able to to spread out in the universe and 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 do good actually i mean i think eventually we could get to a point like that a hundred thousand years from now where we're able to sustain things and, and be actually good and spread love and joy through the universe at that point it would be it would feel like we were doing it in spite of god not because of him like not because of his plan but like because of humans which we just did it we're so awesome <laughs> We freaking did it. And God didn't help us. <laughs> like your plan. Oh, your plan. What was your plan? Our plan. Our plan was better than your plan. Your plan. Humans were around for 100,000 years. And for the first 89,000 years or 99,000 years of that, we were just killing each other, dying, 20 years old. Oh, I got a toothache. I'm dead tomorrow. Oh, my parents are dead. What do I do? I'm going to kill my brother over time we developed civilization us humans god didn't do that <laughs> and civilization helped now we have health care and now we have dentists because of our our grit and determination of humanity I'm, I'm very humanist. But I still want to be a Christian. <laughs> I don't know. A Christian would say like, well, God... God is the source of all love and goodness, so like anything good you do comes from Him. True. But that whole plan thing really trips me up. Sorry, this is kind of a weird day. Just talking about meaning and stuff. But yeah, you guys gotta help me get a girlfriend so I can talk to her about this crap and not you. <laughs> this boring stuff. <laughs> this is what you do with like friends and girlfriends. You talk to them about life. I don't have those people to talk to. So, I talk to you about them. What do you think is the meaning of life? I could probably do like a whole series of videos because I'm just thinking of a bunch of different things that I've talked about. Like, oh, what if someone comments this? Like, I, I didn't, th I didn't, I should say something now to preempt that comment. <laughs> like, what if someone says like, oh, my meaning is my family. Well, I've done a whole bunch of videos on that, so I could do another one, but <laughs> whatever. <laughs> I just feel like, I guess to sum it all up, um, I don't see in the foreseeable future me ever answering the meaning question. Um, so it is kind of awesome like if you're like me and you don't have a meaning or purpose and we're still somehow able to like try to be good people and to try to help whenever we can and to be good it's kind of a miracle like and that miracle you could say you can bring it back and be like oh why do you want to be good god <laughs> and I'm, that's what like uh, c.s lewis would say or something Um, but it is kind of awesome if we're still able to be good people, even without meaning. It kind of makes us better than those other... Like, other people are lucky. They have meaning and they have purpose. But we're better than them. <laughs> because we don't, and we're still good people. We're still trying to, like, make ourselves better so that when we interact with people out there we leave it better than before that's the whole point i just finished that team of rivals abraham lincoln book and that's basically what he said oh maybe i should play it it was pretty cool because at the end of the book they have a she ends it with like tolstoy which i'm like oh tolstoy's my guy but then um the really end of the book 
she brings it back to Lincoln when he's like 26 years old and he's writing about like what he wants to do with his life because Lincoln was chronically they called it melancholy but he was depressed when he was younger and he thought about suicide and um, I'm just gonna play you part of the end because I think it's pretty cool this is a great book it's called team of rivals okay so this is the we're just gonna play the last two minutes of the book for you <laughs> is this allowed is this illegal so let's listen together is said to have his peculiar ambition the 23 year old Abraham Lincoln had written in his open letter to the people of Sangamon County during his first bid for public office in the Illinois State Legislature whether it be true or not I can say for one that I have no other ambition so great as that of being truly esteemed of my fellow men by rendering myself worthy of their esteem how far I shall succeed in gratifying this ambition is yet to be developed the ambition to establish a reputation worthy of the esteem of his fellows so that his story could be told after his death had carried Lincoln through his bleak childhood his laborious efforts to educate himself his string of political failures and a depression so profound that he declared himself more than willing to die except that he had done nothing to make any human being remember that he had lived an indomitable sense of purpose had sustained him throughout the disintegration of the Union and through the darkest months of the war when he was called upon again and again to rally his disheartened countrymen soothe the animosity of his generals and mediate among members of his often contentious administration his conviction that we are one nation indivisible conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal led to the rebirth of a union free of slavery and he expressed this conviction in a language of enduring clarity and beauty exhibiting a literary genius to match his political genius with his death Abraham Lincoln had come to seem the embodiment of his own words with malice toward none with charity for all voiced in his second inaugural to lay out the visionary pathway to a reconstructed union the deathless name he sought from the start had grown far beyond Sangamon County and Illinois reached across the truly United States until his legacy as Stanton had surmised at the moment of his death belonged not only to America but to the ages to be revered and sung throughout all time amen <laughs> so that's a good Doris Kearns Goodwin can end my video today um or wait I gotta do comments vault as always thanks you even today you watched um one of my old videos that's crazy that makes me happy because sometimes those videos i mean nobody watched them ever i was the only one who watched them and so kind of feel like they're just lost to the ether but when you watch it it's like oh somebody watched it i don't know <laughs> um uh for the love of sims commented thanks that's cool and oh that was it and oh those are the only two people i commented this week but whatever i don't care <laughs> i mean i care about that it's very nice thanks i just want every week even if it's just fault or if it's nobody i'll just well if it's nobody then i won't say like nobody commented <laughs> um it's it's important for me to, to appreciate the people who take the time to appreciate me <laughs> i don't know <laughs> Um, so if you took the time to write comments, I always take the time to write a comment back, but I want to also just be like, thanks. I don't know. So, well, yeah, go, 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 comment, what's the meaning of life? I don't know. <laughs> Give me the answer. <laughs> um, and I'll keep, uh, is it, is it Tinder? Thanks. And we'll keep. Every week we keep chugging along, and uh, another week's another week. So thanks, and see you tomorrow. Bye. I can talk. I can talk. I can talk. I can talk. Okay. Ready? Um. <clears throat>